Hello everyone, Philippa here. So today I'm going to show you how you can build an HP bar for your game units. So if you are a lazy person and you just want to grab the shader and exit the video, head on goodoldshaders.com and download it from there. I'll be posting a link in the description of this video where you can grab the shader. But also if you want to grab the project file from this tutorial where I'll build the shader from scratch, head up towards my YouTube page, find the tutorial project file sections and there's going to be a link in there for this project. So make sure you're following me on Achio to be able to grab more things that I'll be posting in the near future. But if you're interested in seeing how I build the shader from scratch inside Gideo and want to learn how you can build your own shaders, then I would suggest you to watch the other full tutorial where I build the shader from scratch. So on this video, I'll be showing you how can I hook up a shader with GD scripts to follow your unit attributes. So let's quickly see how the shader works. So this is basically how the shader works. We have a main bar color and we have an empty color. So whenever we change our instance shader parameter here for the progress bar, you're going to see it's going to switch between those two colors, mixing them both at a given point here, which we coded inside the shader. And you can basically switch these colors as you see fit to whatever you want. And it's going to basically mix between these two colors. So this is the idea. You're going to also need two textures here to be able to generate this bar. So the first one is going to be the albedo part of the texture of the HP bar. And the second one is going to be the alpha. So the reason that I made the outsides of it as black is because I wanted to have a nice little dark outline around the HP bar, which is the one you can see here. So this is how the shader works. And you basically want to copy and paste that inside a mesh and you can basically use a quad mesh and this is how you can control the size of your HP bar just by using this the dimensions for the quad mesh so if you try to use a scale with the mesh is not going to work just remember that you will need to use the actual size for the mesh not the transformation for the mesh so that is how this shader works let's see how we're going to be applying it inside our RTS project Go back here to my RTS project. Let's see what is about controlling the HP bar per unit. So the difficult part of linking the two is because the HP bar shader works from zero towards one, while the units inside the game is going to have different HP values. So you're going to see that the rate that this bar decreases is much faster than these ones because these units have a much higher HP bar. So if I go towards my game data here, you're going to see that the HP for max is 320 and for those units is 40. So how we can work this out inside our game? So the idea that I wanted to do, normally people on working with stats for games usually have a maximum value for those. So I don't want to have an HP maximum value towards my units. I think this is unnecessary because HP is going to be a dynamic attribute that all units are going to be given at points. And whenever they are built, the HP they get from the game data is going to be their HP max. So I don't see the reason of creating a new one. So in the case of attack or other stuff, maybe we can have an attack maximum amount. But for HP, the default value given here is going to automatically be the maximum one. So the way that that works through coding is that we're going to need to calculate the ratios between the unit's HP towards the shader. So from zero towards, from zero to one towards zero and the maximum amount of per unit. So here, whenever we start the prefab list, I made some changes here. I also am doing a prioritize structure here. So first I generate some blank data for the prefab of the units. So I'm actually set some data towards the unit, like the HP bar factor and the HP max. So I'm generating these to be blank at first. Then I'm going to preload all the game data from the object. So it's going to preload everything here. Then I'm going to also set here on the HP max to be equal to my current given object HP value. And you can change this how you like, but this is how I'm working in. So inside my object set data, I'm actually doing a couple of things. So this was the idea before was to have a function here so we can work just like a set get to have special logic apply depending on the data we are going to be changing. And this is one of those use cases. 
So whenever we change the HP maximum value for a given object, I want to calculate the factor between the bar, the units bar from zero to one from the HP bar. This is the HP bar shader. And you're going to see here we have a progress instance shader here that controls the bar. So the shader only goes to zero towards one. But um, to code, I want to control that towards the HP values, which is very different for each given unit. So how you, how you can do that is basically by dividing one towards the maximum HP value per unit. That is the factor that you're going to multiply later to get the current progress value to update the shader. So whenever we change the maximum amount for the HP, I calculate the factor. But whenever I change the HP value per unit, I am also going to use the factor here. So if it's above zero, I want to first display the bar and create a auto hide. So the unit bar also disappears later. So basically when we change the HP of a unit, I want to pop up the HP bar. And after a couple of seconds, I want to disable it. So that is what it does. So whenever the unit initializes, this is how I'm actually building the timer to hide the HP bar. So once our unit is being initialized, now I'm going to be adding a timer, set its name to be something I can recognize later if I want it. Then the next, I just want to connect its timeout signal to the HP bar so it can hide it. So this is how it starts. And because you set up the HP bar, whenever the unit loads the prefab data, it's going to automatically display it. But we will want to avoid having an HP bar for every unit that enters the game. So this is why the next after, after everything we have done with the HP, with the prefab data for our units, we want to set its HP bar to be hidden by default. Otherwise, it's going to be initialized. And because we set the HP bar to a default value using the prefab data, it's going to display the HP bar. So this is how you can hide the HP bar after it has been displayed. So whenever we set the HP of the unit through the unit game data, so our units have an object data, which we are storing all the game data inside of it. Whenever we set the HP of the units, it's going to uh, fall on this category here which is going to automatically restart the timer to hide the HP bar later. So I prefer this method instead of using a wait because I don't like how weights change everything together. I can sell that using a flag, so it creates other issues. So having a timer seems to be, that's the simplest way to deal with that. So whenever we set the HP, I want to restart the timer to basically display the HP. And once the timer runs out, it's going to hide the HP bar back again. And this is how you, you set the progress of the HP bar, which is the HP amount multiplied by the HP bar factor, which is calculated by the 1.0, which is the maximum amount our progress var can have for the HP bar shader divided by the data value, which is in this case is matched to be an HP max. So this is how we are setting it up. Whenever we set the HP maximum, we want to create and generate an HP factor, which later we are going to use to multiply the HP value for our progress instance shader to be multiplied by the HP bar factor. So we can have in turn the progress variable, which we are going to set up inside the shader so it displays correctly. So this is how I am actually setting the progress to follow the correct amount to respect the HP of the units. So this is also going to be faster to calculate. We all know that dividing operations are usually slower than multiplying ones. So by storing that division here on the object as a HP bar factor, we can simply whenever we change the HP, use it as a multiplication factor. So because we will be changing HP much more than setting the HP max, this function here is not going to be slow at all. And so as you know, this everything here happens before we actually change the data. So be, care be very careful with building this type of set get structure here on the code that we are not actually changing any values here regarding the object data itself. So be very careful when you do that because this, everything here, it's happening before the data is set. This can be very confusing if you want to happen values after the data has been set 
and you get into conflict with these two. So this happens whenever we want to change a data. And this is stuff that I want to happen before I change the data. So that is how it works. And this is pretty much is going to be the system I'm going to use for setting attacks and other stuff that I need to change so I can update other stuff unrelated to only setting the data. So this is pretty much how you can hook up the shader back to the units. So the way that I'm reducing the unit's life is on my physics process. I'm using an object state to reduce the HP by the current one minus one. So this is how I'm reducing the life of the units whenever they start moving. So if I run my main scene here, just give it a second. You're going to see that whenever I move my Mac here, it's going to be taking one HP out of it by every few physics process frames. And you're going to see how long it takes until it reaches that zero, then the unit is dead. But with soldiers, because they have a much less HP, they die much more faster. And as you can see, that is how it works. And the HP bar also gets hidden after it has been set through a timer. So this is pretty much how you can hook up your unit HP bar towards your RTS game. This is the way that I'm currently doing it. So as you can see, that is how it works. If you want to see how to build this shader from scratch, follow the other tutorial. If you want to grab the shader, it is posted on goodoldshaders.com. And if you want the project file from this tutorial, it's going to be on my itch show page. So that's about it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys on the next video.